in this session we are going to do a case scenario analysis but in a very unconventional manner do you want to really feel what the future feels like yes sir. i have a surprise for you i would request the learners to come and see the surprise for themselves you have the vr headsets so that i can immerse you and make you feel what it feels like when you are a passenger in an autonomous car Okay, you can take off your headsets. Quite an unpleasant situation. Uh, yeah. Prepared to take the first scenario. Yes. So I'm sure you experienced as one of the four passengers in a car, which was a manual car, which collided unfortunately with an autonomous car. Now let me pose this question: What do you think? Who should be held responsible? as a passionate advocate for transforming lives at universal ai university we have crafted a very creative model a very unique learning model and we have successfully implemented that so today in our session we were discussing about uh, the ethical aspects and the dilemmas around evolving technology and how you know the maybe the technological infrastructure or maybe the legal infrastructure of uh, our economy needs to keep up with how the how fast technology is evolving and how human practices need to evolve alongside So when we talk about the first scenario it was basically a driverless car I was one of the passenger and then we got stuck uh, we we got uh, we can got into an accident with the uh, a manual car so it was actually something that shook me a little because it was to be very honest very real uh, the VR glasses actually worked that they are supposed to but yes the learnings that we got in the discussion point being who is to blame is something that actually uh, is a question a dilemma that we were put into uh, wherein the you know because we know that technology cannot make mistakes it's always the human who makes error so being a passenger in the manual car myself i attribute fault to the driverless car because in my vr experience it vividly showcased the faults in the driverless car the collision made me feel uh, made me realize the importance of robust and flawless system in that technology which can work without human intervention so in my opinion a company and uh, the vehicle owner should be held responsible for uh, leaving that technology unattended well uh, i have a different perspective over here the simulation allowed me to understand the crucial role of air of decision human decision making and the attentiveness but uh, i agree that the driverless car was left unattended and that it has flaws however the manual car crashed even when a human was in control which brings the human driver to be held responsible that's a interesting perspective but raj what if i were to drive that car i was a driver yeah remember i am your dean would you still hold me accountable <laughs> okay there there were again different situations uh, like what if an autonomous car hits a pedestrian and you are just a passenger in that autonomous taxi per se let's switch perspectives in this case what if you were one of the passengers in an autonomous car which has run into a pedestrian on the street when considering the autonomous car hitting a pedestrian i would like to emphasize on the fact of the technology provider why because the vr immersion which we just saw it showed potential uh, deficiencies in the technology and uh, when a company who manufactures and designs these technologies it is having huge responsibility on its shoulders let's take an example that uh, if a pedestrian just does something unconventional like uh, glancing at a phone or moving at a random path if that data point is not in the algorithm of the self driving vehicle then uh, it would be a issue i believe that it is important to realize the intertwined accountability between the technology provider and the pedestrian it is important that while technology is advancing human awareness and uh, social responsible behaviors are equally vital it is necessary for both the parties to contribute to road safety um, 
a person uh, who is walking a pedestrian should be conscious of all the movements around him irrespective of whether the vehicles are autonomous or manual the vr experience actually made me reflect on the complexity of the situation as in emphasizing on the notion of shared responsibility thank god is one it was not a heated conversation but then again it was something that uh, is still a dilemma and uh, we still need to find that sweet spot wherein we have and actually we have someone to blame it on and and you know when different students from different backgrounds bring forth such different perspectives it really makes or it really i would say it really made me think out of my horizon with the use of vr of course there is a strong connect there is a profound connect and there is more active engagement with the content if i were to do this case read this case i leave it to the interpretation of the learners but in this case since they have more information and what i could actually analyze is definitely that students were able to come up with better informed decisions because they could have a deep dive into the real situation so when they step into the uh, vr related case you know they were actually into that situation and they could experience that and that's where i think that triggers their thought process and they come up with more realistic experiences if you are not giving them a case or any situation they will not come out with their ideas but when you give them a platform they perform and i believe and i i actually put this point forward that everyone should give them not i would say always the case but at least some situation wherein they should be coming out with their pointers and it's adds value to the class so the topic which we are going to discuss today that innovate to elevate for the future branding strategies so are we ready to go yes. let's quickly take one of the sector and then we will delve into this discussion that how this sector can be innovated so that in the coming two decades they can come out as a different kind of brand using all those uh, aspects which can help them to elevate so can we take the home decor today yes yeah great great so uh, in this uh, we were actually talking about the furniture or the you know the how you create a house or how you build the different things so the main important key takeaways that i would like to take is the social trends changing you know people are actually you know the things should change according to them the sustainability that is attracting more number of people because there was interaction there was you know simultaneously there was points coming out and people were actually brainstorming in that example of home decor as you said mm -hmm. so in home decor when we talk about home decor we want lifestyle preferences we mm -hmm. have aesthetic choices we mm -hmm. have an emotional touch also there today consumer is someone who is always is omnipresent because of not now but they are omnipresent they are just a click away so don't they know before they go to buy the particular product they know that what are they are going to buy and what they expect from us when i say us i am talking about the branch the organization is that you should give them the right assistance isn't it a responsible consumer according to me is someone who is focusing on the societal aspects so one thing i always vouch for this particular generation that they are very very social friendly people but in recent days we are we are seeing that they are not focusing towards the longevity rather they are focusing towards the aesthetics so uh, social trends we have to consider that we like the the thing we are buying should be more aesthetic that the consumer suits like they they want to buy that thing and the second thing could be accessibility now accessibility is a major part because the consumers are now mainly focused towards reducing their times it's very interesting like furniture are made up of banana leaves and all so what we can do we can just make an interactive sustainability scorecard to each of the furnitures which can tell and uh, tell about us the detailed information about the product like how it is the manufactured what is the material used what is the carbon footprint of the product so of uh, because of that the customers can make some eco conscious uh, purchases there were two three points wherein the kids were giving the example of banana leaf sustainability that time i realized that okay these youngsters are very much into learning which i always put emphasize at least spend half an hour on reading anything which interest you so that is one thing which i understood that yes they are in a in a learning mode can we hear something from your end that how this adaptability part can be taken care when it comes to especially in home decor 
to to elevate the brand if you are uh, relating consumer behavior with adaptability then only the brand can elevate as we can see in sustainable in sustainability i want to relate adaptability there's a brand herman miller which are using recycled materials for manufacturing their product this i always say to the class that if i'm going to teach what i know i'm somewhere leveling you with my knowledge so come out with your ideas come out with your, your benchmark it should not be anyone it should be you and only you so do whatever you feel like just ensure that you know what you are doing that's very important because many at times we do so many things and probably we are lost in that game it's not a game it's something that you need to understand that you are here to live your life and i have always mentioned that mba is a crash course to know life when you are already this doing this kind of education then you should know all the life skills and this is life to the fullest so whenever any team works with me or any other extra curricular activity i always say two things which you have to maintain one is the learning and second is the smile thank you thank you all of you for putting your points thank you